All right, I screwed up here. I'm running this in, I was running the carriage back and forth, and I decided to run the cross slide in a little bit. It was going forward, and I thought, sure, that if I put this in gear for the cross slide, that it would run it in, and it didn't. It ran it out, and I wasn't paying enough attention, and it run this cross slide out to where it jammed up into the handle, and it got jammed in there pretty tight. I couldn't get it loose. Well, I took it apart to see what happened. It was just so tight that I couldn't get that uh, nut loose on the dial and I couldn't get anything loose. I tried loosening up the gib and I couldn't get the, the gib was actually out and it was actually cut into the handle a little bit into the dial. I wound up taking the cross slide nut. There's a hex head bolt here that goes in to holes that cross slide nut in there and I wound up taking it out and I had to force it out and it stripped the threads in it. Once I got those out I was able to tap this back enough until I got it loosened up. It got it off that gib and stuff and got everything loosened up and then I was able to get the dial off and turn the crossfeed screw out until I could see what was going on in there. Now this is a crossfeed nut. It's okay but the mount point for it here is boogered up inside. The threads are boogered up in there. I don't know if I can salvage that or not. may have to make a new one, I don't know, or uh, get a new one. Might be able to just salvage that and just get a new nut to put in there. I don't know. We'll see. I couldn't get it to turn one way or another. Any, anything I did, it was jammed in there pretty tight. And I figured, thought it, maybe I stripped the gears in there or something, or screwed something up. But I took it apart, and once I got it apart, you can see this gear that drives that crossfeed is held in with a roll pin, just a steel roll pin and that roll pin sheared so this this thing spun on the shaft so that's not a big disaster it's not anything that can't be fixed and the gears in the apron all are working fine it didn't take any teeth out of it didn't screw anything else up just this so I can drive that pin out of there put a new roll pin in there fix that crossfeed nut and everything will be fine except for my pride Anyway, that doesn't hurt the operation of the break-in operation any at all. We'll get back to doing the break-in on here. We run through 200, so now it's 220, and to 220 we got a change to E3. There we go. All right, we'll do that again. Oh, it's now she's really sailing. We'll run through all of the speeds on that. I didn't spend near as much time on the high speeds as I did the low speeds. I got through each of them and they all work fine. I'm not used to anything that high speed there on the lathe. It's kind of scary for me, but anyway, we got that done. Got some good news on this in a way. This uh, nut, drive screw nut for that cross slide, I went and looked in it and those threads looked like they were probably okay. So I dug out a thread chaser and run down through it and they were fine. And then to show a quality metal that they use on these screws, this was looked like it was pretty well stripped. And I run a thread chaser over that, and that restored those threads out to where they're okay, I guess. They're usable. So we'll see what happens on that. It'll work. I'll probably still see if I can find another one of those, but I doubt if I can find one of these in town anywhere. I can use this all the way... It is. The only thing that I need now is to uh, knock out that roll pin. We put it back together and work just fine. All right. all right. All in all, my little crash here wasn't near such a disaster as I thought it was going to be. Looked at the nut here, the cross slide lead screw nut. It wasn't damaged. I thought the threads were boogered up in it because that nut came out of there with the threads boogered up in it. But once I got to looking, the threads in it weren't damaged. I took a thread chaser and run down through it and it cleaned up just fine. No problem there. This uh, gear is held on with a little, they call it a tension spring or a torsion spring or something. But it's just one of those little rolled spring steel pins and it sheared off. And so that this uh, gear came off. It didn't the shaft up or anything like that. Everything was good on that. So I just got a new pin and stuck in there. The nut here, the threads were all boogered up on it, flattened out. And I run a thread chaser over that and those cleaned up real nice. And I don't think it was in here that caused that. I think it was from rubbing coming out through this hole here where it mounts in. It was pushed so tight this way that I had to use a cheater on the 
Allen key to get this to turn out of there and I think as that was spinning out of there it was tight up against this hole in here, this pocket in here that it goes into and I think that spun the threads flat and I've threaded this into the nut. It threads in there just fine. I think it worked just fine but I went ahead and went to the hardware store and got a new nut. I had to cut it off to the size of that one but I just got a new or bolt rather. I just got a new bolt, stainless steel bolt to fit in there to replace that and I've got a little bit of a nick here on this uh, hub where the uh, gib jammed into that and cut into it so all in all uh, very little damage except to my pride and that's been folded, spindled, mutilated, stomped, kicked and crushed so much that there's very little of that left anyway so not a big loss there Anyway, I'll get ahead and get this put back together. It's ready to go together now. I didn't take it all apart. I didn't take the uh, cross light off. I was able to look down through there and turn that and make sure that that gear was okay in the apron. And that's fine. The only thing, it just sheared the pin off of this. I was thinking about replacing that pin with a piece of aluminum welding rod but I didn't think the shear strength on that would be enough. I went to town and I was able to find a pin to fit that so that's all pinned back up together. We'll slide this back in here. I'm gonna have to adjust that screw back in there for the for the gib to hold the gib out here. And I can slide this thing here and line that hole up with that nut and you got the nut lined up in there. And we'll just put that bolt in there and tighten that down and then I'll put the rest of this assembly back together. It'll be just like it never happened. Okay. I gotta get all of the thrust washers cleaned back up and put back in there. There's a, a washer that uh, goes in behind that thrust washer against the shoulder in this shaft and then the thrust washers go on. I gotta get those cleaned up and put back in. Okay, all back together now. No worse for wear. Nobody will ever know the difference except me and you, and I'm not telling anybody if you don't, so I've got to run it at the slowest speed again now, 70 RPM. I've got to kind of level this up or put some wedges underneath here to uh, stiffen this up a little bit. I don't want to anchor it down to the floor here for a couple of reasons. One, this is not where it's going to be forever, and this is not its finished place. I don't know how long it will be here. And uh, two, I've got PEX pipe running through the floor and I don't exactly know where it's at. I don't want to take a chance on drilling into the PEX pipe in the floor for the in-floor heat. I'm not going to do anything too dramatic with this here right now. It is a little rocky because the floor is not perfectly flat so I'm going to get some wedges and kind of wedge this up and, and stabilize it and uh, get it leveled up and trued up. But my first job that I've got to do with it is to turn down the shaft for the tailwheel steering and fitting that goes up in the rudder and the shaft, I've got a new piece for that, and the shaft is too big to go up into the tube on the rudder, so I've got to turn that down so it'll fit in there so we can fix that up for the water rudder steering. I'll probably uh, bolt that onto the faceplate. I was going to get a hour meter and put on it. I forgot to do that when I was in town, so I'll have to remember to do that. Now they say that after the break-in period to change the oil and the headstock and stuff, but since I washed that thing out pretty good and put the fresh oil in it, I'm not going to change it right now. I'm going to let it run for oh, several hours here and make sure it gets good and broke in before I change that oil. After getting all of the crud out of it and uh, filings and stuff like that out of it, it, it uh, should be in pretty good shape in there. And I want to make sure and get all that stuff worn in before I change the oil on it. 